Hello world and welcome to a brand new Azure vlog. In our last video we discovered the basics of Azure Firewall. You learned how I deployed a Azure Firewall. You saw how we made sure that we can manage a Windows server in our protected VNet using a DNet rule. We also set up some application rules so we can visit some websites from that server. That was all very, very basic. The Azure Firewall is actually capable of much more. So in this video, we are going to have a look at the more advanced stuff, network filtering in the Azure Firewall. We are going to have a look at content filtering using the Azure Firewall, uh, some things with threat intelligence, the advanced stuff. But before we are going to have a look at those things, let's first grab a really good cup of coffee. That was a very good cup of coffee. Cybersecurity and coffee, I think those are great. In fact, I think coffee actually connects everybody working in the, the information technology. So pretty, uh, pretty cool. So in my previous video, I showed you how we deployed a Azure Firewall. Uh, we created a firewall policy for that uh, firewall instance and we configured a DNet rule to manage our server and a application rule to visit actually everything Microsoft.com. There is actually much more in Azure Firewall. So if we switch over to my desktop, I am already in the firewall policy that is connected to my firewall. And if we go, for example, to application rules, you see that I have two application rules uh, over here, app zero one, which actually allows uh, everything to uh, www.google.com. And I have a allow Microsoft that basically allows me to do everything that is on the Microsoft.com domain, even subdomains are included over there. So there are actually two options over here. I can create a rule collection and I can add a rule to an existing collection. So I have two collections over here. If I click on add rule, I can select my root uh, collection and I can select one of the collections that I've created earlier and add something over here. Collections actually have an interesting option that we uh, went quite quick through in my previous video. So I would like to explain a little bit more over here. Within the collection, uh, I could set the rule collection action. By default, everything in Azure Firewall is blocked. So by setting a action over here, allow, I could allow some things. I think that's the best way to go. You should always start with a firewall that's blocking everything and only allow the certain things 
that you would like to get your traffic to, especially for, for servers. I think for workstations, etc., it's a little bit different as users will visit the internet, use application to, uh, applications and so on. So the interesting thing over here is that I could allow not just uh, domain names, but also web categories. And let's do that right now. So let's give this a name, allow government. So we could allow government uh, 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 websites and stuff. Let's say this uh, priority is 120. We are going to allow something. We have a root uh, collection group, which is the default application root collection group. I give it a name, allow government. In, in fact, let's do something different. Let's say we are going to name this allow categories. So we can add multiple categories over here. So my source is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. That's where my uh, virtual machine is living in. I want to enable HTTP and HTTPS protocol. And here is the interesting thing. We are going for web categories. And I could say uh, that th there are a lot of liability categories over here. Alcohol, child abuse, all stuff that you don't want to allow actually especially on the server um, but hey let's say we have a, a business use government and I would like to uh, to enable that I could also say uh, allow business we also picked the same subnet over here slash 24 also HTTP, HTTPS, and we are going for a category. And I think business was over here. So now we can visit government websites and applications and business website and applications as soon as I click add. And you might think what websites are in those categories and we can actually look in Azure Firewall and check our websites and see in what category they are in. So if I switch to my desktop, we are here still at the firewall policy. And if I go to web categories over here, I can search for example, azure.com and see in what category it is living. It is in computers and technology. Let's search for nasa.gov gov and we see that this is in education and government so our rule has just been created we still have the azure virtual machine with a browser that we can use so if we go to that machine and go to nasa.gov we should able to see something over there so here we are back at my desktop we are still in our virtual machine and if I go to nasa.gov, we'll see that we can visit it. But when we go to, let's say, cnn.com, that is disabled because we denied everything. Another thing that I would like to show you is threat intelligence in the Azure Firewall especially when you're working with a premium SKU, there is a possibility to block an alert based on threat intel. So threat intel are basically IP addresses and stuff that are indicators of a cybersecurity attack. So those IP addresses are used earlier with an attack or hosting malware, whatever. Um, and we can do stuff with them uh, in Azure Firewall. So if I switch over to my desktop, I am still at the Azure Firewall policy. And if I go to threat intelligence over here, you'll see that the threat intelligence mode is currently disabled. I could say I want the alerts only, and that basically means that uh, only a, a log is written when uh, a IP address is used that is also 
part of the threat intel collection or I could alert and deny. This is interesting. Often threat intel is very accurate, but nowadays attackers also like to use cloud. And that means that IP addresses and stuff that they are using are only valid for a limited time. So it might be that you are blocking stuff, let's say a 100% legal application, which is using a IP address that is used a couple of days or weeks earlier uh, in an attack executed by an attacker. So I would recommend to alert and deny because most of it is, is very true positive and uh, should be uh, blocked. But if you are in doubt, let's go for alert only. So if I switch back to my desktop, I will select alert and deny for this uh, firewall. So my subnet is protected very well. So in order to view the logs related to your Azure firewall, we need to configure the firewall log settings. So we can make sure that all logs are written down to, for example, a log analytic workspace. So if I switch over to my desktop, I am already in the Azure portal. So if I click on my firewall instance, you'll see that we have a thing called diagnostic settings over here. And this is actually where we can set up our logging configuration. So if I click on add diagnostic setting, I can give it a name. Let's say uh, move logs to log analytics, LA. And we could quite easily select all logs over here. And that will actually cost you a lot of money because every package that is going through the firewall will create a, a log. So that is quite expensive. I would recommend, and that's actually based on the SKU of Azure Firewall that you are using, to only have certain types of logs being forwarded to uh, your log analytic workspace. So in my case, I would like to uh, at least have the, uh, the application rules as we are using them. And I would like to have the threat intelligence log so I can view the alerts in my log analytics workspace. If I click here on the uh, send to log analytic workspace item, we have more. Uh, uh, types of destinations uh, over here. I will select my other subscription and I will use Sentinel over here. And this is also actually a point where you should take a decision. I would recommend to have all relevant logs being ingested into Microsoft Sentinel as you can correlate uh, over there between your network logs, let's say Defender for Endpoint, which is running on the server, uh, you can correlate over there, which is really, really helpful when dealing with uh, security incidents. But um, forwarding all your network logs to a log analytic workspace is already expensive. Forwarding them to a log analytics workspace, which also is a Sentinel workspace, is even more expensive as the Sentinel uh, solution in Log Analytics um, actually also uh, has expenses when you ingest data into that, uh, that workspace. So in my case, I will forward it to, to Sentinel as, it's, as these are just the application rules and threat Intel stuff. So if I click on save, this will actually save my configuration and data will now be forwarded to log analytics. It might take some time for you to have your data popping up at your Sentinel or log analytic workspace. But let me show you quickly 
how that would look like. So if I switch to my desktop, I go to my Sentinel workspace and I hit logs, it's over here. In log management, there is the Azure Diagnostics table. If I run a query on it, let's remove that. We'll see that all things that are done on this uh, on, on the server, the demo server that I showed you, are logged over here. So we can see you can see that I visited, for example, Bing.com, and it got a deny as only Microsoft uh, is allowed Google and I think business and government uh, websites. But you see over here is that a subdomain, Microsoft.com, uh, is, is allowed. So this gives you a overview of the logging data from your Azure Firewall into Microsoft Sentinel. So in this video, you saw the more advanced stuff related to Azure Firewall. We configured a allow rule based on content filtering in the Azure Firewall and we explored threat intelligence. I also showed you how you can forward logs to a log analytic workspace or Microsoft Sentinel, which is actually quite cool because now we can create use cases, detections in Microsoft Sentinel and correlate events over all our data. So I hope you like this content. If so, hit the thumbs up button. Of course, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you get a notification when I upload a new video. That being said, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.